In this lesson, we look at the different components within the CPU. You need to think about the different function of the components and what are the actual components. In your workbooks, you will find this page. I want you to find that page and then watch the video that I have attached to this task. Whilst you're doing that, I want you to make notes around the outside of it to explain the different components. You should have made notes of the different components, but let's go through the different sections and update your notes for anything you think you might have missed. Let's first look at the control unit. The control unit is in overall control of the CPU. It executes instructions. That's its main purpose and controls the flow of data in and out of the CPU. The ALU is the arithmetic logic unit and this is the main place which performs calculations such as additions, subtractions, comparisons and binary shifts. We'll find out more about those later in the course. It also performs Boolean opera operators, logical operators such as AND or a NOT. Here you can see an example. We've got two numbers, 45 and 10. The ALU subtracts number 2 from number 1, giving us 35. Look how it's using the accumulator to store that value. Any results from the ALU are stored in the accumulator and this is one of our registers. You can see registers are a different part of the CPU and we'll come on to those shortly. Now a register is a very small amount of memory, a memory location, but it's very, very fast. And this is where the current instructions that we are decoding and executing are stored. Any data which has been fetched from RAM will be held in our registers as well. We'll learn about the different registers in the next lesson. We have a small amount of memory inside the CPU called cache. This is bigger than a register, but it is used for frequently used instructions and data. It's close to the processor, the control unit, the CU, uh, so that it is easy to access. Imagine you're doing the same instruction time and time again. Well, you want those instructions close to you. Imagine if you had to keep getting out of your place and walking to the teacher's desk to pick up a pen, come back to your place, do a calculation and walk back and take your pen back to the teacher's desk. Well, that's not effective. Wouldn't it be better if we had somewhere where we could keep our pen on the desk and that's what cache is. It's somewhere for our data and instructions that we can access quickly and easily. I want you to find this page in your workbook now. I want you to think about buses. On the next page we're going to have a think about what these are and how they work and you want to fill in the definitions please about those buses. Inside the CPU and computer all the different components are connected via a series of wires. These are what we call buses. On our diagram that we've used earlier, you'll see the buses with three different colours, orange, pink and blue. Now the system bus is the name given to the collection of the following three buses. So it's like a series of wires together connecting all these different units. All the buses together are known as the systems bus. The first bus, the control bus, is used to control where data is going. The data bus actually carries data to and from our registers to memory. And our address bus sends the address of where to get data or instructions from, usually from RAM. 